Good evening, everyone. I hereby call to order the regular session of the Orange Unified School Board meeting for August 18, 2022 at 7.07 7 p.m. Uh, please stand to say the pledge. Before we um, begin, I just wanted to say, as you can see, we're missing a trustee today. Um, uh, trustee Moffitt is out of town um, for her mother's uh, services, and so um, our thoughts are with her. All right, so item B, 3B, report of closed session. Dr. Hansen. Thank you, President Yamasaki. I'm pleased to report that the Board of Education has appointed Martha Arceo, Principal Elementary School, and Cameron Shepard, Assistant Principal, Senior High School, and the vote was 601. Congratulations to our new administrators. Okay, item 3C, adoption of agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? Uh, President Yamasaki, uh, there is an item that we'd like to pull off the agenda at the recommendation of staff. Okay. Um, we met with the Anaheim City uh, planners and item, it would be, excuse me, it's item 7A, resolution number 042223, intention to dedicate easement to City of Anaheim. We'd like to pull that off the agenda for this evening um, in order to allow the staff to do additional work. Okay, and we're gonna bring that? In September. Next. Okay, uh, so do we have a motion to, the, to adopt the agenda to, as amended? I'll move. Okay, thank you. Second. So, Trustee Ramsey and seconded by Ortega. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, agenda is adopted. Six zero one. All right. We'll go on to item four: announcements and acknowledgments. Uh, A superintendent's report. Thank you, President Yamasaki. Um, I'd like to first start by um, saying it was our first day of school this week on Wednesday, and it's so great to see our students here in our board meeting. And it was wonderful to go out and visit the school sites, our administrative team, um, and I'll be introducing some of our new administrators in the district this evening. Um, but also our district office spends the first day of school going out to each and every school site um, to give a welcome to our families, our returning students, and our teachers, and all of our staff on our campuses. And we had a great first day, and it was really wonderful to be out there. And thank you to our teachers um, and all their tremendous efforts to get started and kick off the school year. We also had professional development. Um, two days before school started, teacher preparation day, so they're all already raring to go and ready for the 2022-23 school year. So I'd like to introduce some of our um, new administrators in the school district. We have our new elementary administrators at Ele Anaheim Hills Elementary School. We have Corey Koska, who comes to us from Anaheim Elementary School District, has been in administration over 20 years. Esplanade Elementary School, we have Cheryl Sosa, formerly our coordinator for um, preschool programs, and she'll be taking over as principal at Esplanade. Christy McDougall, who is formerly an instructional um, specialist in our district who went to Capistrano Unified to be an assistant principal, well, is now the um, Imperial Elementary School principal. We have John Ruffridge, who was very involved in Jordan Academy in assisting to design the coding program there, the computer immersion program, and has been in education for over 18 years as a music instructor as well as a middle school instructor, and he will be the principal at Jordan Academy. 
Um, former principal at Jordan and coming from Santa Ana prior to Orange and uh, long-term administrator, very successful, is now at Levita Elementary School, Lorena Rubio. And running Springs, uh, Christine, Yo Christine Yokoyama, formerly at Esplanade, is going to be taking over at um, Running Springs Elementary School. Um, we also have our new secondary administrators who um, are all currently administrators in our district who have been promoted into their positions. Mark McLaughlin will take over at Yorba Middle School, and he was formerly the principal at Running Springs Elementary. Sandra Pre Preciado Martin, her entire career in Orange Unified, formerly a teacher at Canyon High School, assistant principal at El Medina in um, high school, as well as uh, elementary principal, uh, West Orange, middle school principal, Yorba, and now El Medina High School principal. And then Cheryl Anderson, um, also long-term employee within Orange Unified. She is was formerly an assistant principal at both Orange, Orange High School as well as Villa Park High School. And most recently, the principal at Levita will be the Orange High School principal. And Dennis McHouston, as well as being a former high school principal, also long-term employee in Orange Unified, having been a teacher and assistant principal, coordinator of alter alternative schools, as well as principal at Richland High School is now taking over at Villa Park High School. And then we have Julie Lucas, also uh, formerly an, a coordinator of special education, vice principal, assistant principal at Villa Park High School. She is now the principal of our alternative programs at Parkside Education Center. So I always think it's nice to you know get a face with a name. We made, uh, there were a lot of recruitments going on during the summer, a lot of changes within the school district. And this is just at our site administrative level. We had changes with assistant principals. Um, but I thought it was important so that the board, as you go out and visit our school sites, you know um, who our new administrative team is. And we did have a press release that went out introducing all of these wonderful new um, principals that will be leading our schools. And I'd also like to um, share with the community that we had um, a uh, ground, not a groundbreaking, uh, a grand opening of our El Medina pool, our aquatic center at El Medina High School. It's taken some time, but we're so excited that it's now open for use by our students. And I wanna thank our trustees who did come for that um, grand opening and the celebration with the aquatic students, as well as their coaches and their staff, um, Trustee Rumsey, Ledesma, and um, Paige. We're all there for the event, and we have some great pictures on our website if you haven't had a chance to see the pool. But this evening, we also have a video we'd like to share with the community of our new aquatic center at El Medina High School. If you could please put that up. We are so excited about this new facility here at El Medina High School, but our old pool served us for many years. It feels amazing, it's a long time coming. I'm happy for all the kids, I'm happy for the parents. It's gonna mean a tremendous amount to our program in terms of growth and what we're trying to accomplish here. Tremendously excited.
Over the last four years, the numbers have dwindled down a little bit from our athletes. But now that we're here back at El Medina, we're just excited to grow the program and eventually have some of those middle schoolers that come and see El Medina and see the new pool and think, wow, I want to swim here. I want to go here. This new pool will give our team a new sense of confidence. The stadium being completed two years ago, now the aquatic center being completed, it shows the commitment of the Orange Unified School District in making all our facilities first class. One, two, Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. The kids are going to love it. Um, unbelievable. What a, what a wonderful feather in El Medina High School's cap. It's just a beautiful facility. And I see everyone walking through with a big smile and impressed with their scene. And that this facility is going to serve our kids for the next 50 years. Thank you, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. Um, so uh, next on our item is my report. I um, wanna say, first of all, welcome to our first board meeting of the 2022-23 school year. I hope everyone had a nice and, and restful summer. A new year means new beginnings and a new, a new school year is no different. And so I wanna thank all the teachers, classified and administration for working so hard in preparation for this new school year. I was at um, an Orange Unified uh, Council PTA meeting last night and my first thought was these parents are willing to come out on the first day of school that night to work on projects and getting ready for the school year. And so I want to point out too, and thank all the parents for doing all the hard work as well. Um, it was wonderful to see all the pictures of students on their first day of school. And I'd like to wish them all, students, teachers, and parents, the best for successful, academically rich and productive, and of course, healthy school year. Um, we're here to support you. And I just also wanna add that I'm really sorry to miss the El Medina uh, pool opening. I was out of town um, and I really tried to schedule my vacation around it, but I couldn't make it work, but I definitely will schedule a visit to visit the pool soon. Um, and that concludes my report. So we'll go on to item uh, 4C, board recognition of students, staff, and community. Do we have any board members who have recognitions or like to make comments? Anybody? Okay. Trust me. Um, I just wanted to say welcome back. Welcome back to all the students. I hope you had a restful summer. I'm, I'm guessing you're theater. I don't know why. I'm just getting a feeling here that you are. Um, I think this year is going to be really exciting, especially with the extended learning and all of that. And know that we love theater. So, um, And I also want to thank all the teachers and staff as well, because we know you've worked so, so hard to get our students back. And this year just feels very exciting. It feels like we're really, really off to a new start. Um, and I hope that it's just the best one ever. Um, I want to also thank our Student and Community Services Office, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Angel, for putting on the um, community safety forms. My understanding is they went really well, and I'm anxious to hear a report back on that. I think we're going to get that next month. Um, I'm also excited about the pool as well. My first memory of the El Medina pool was being about seven or eight and climbing up to the high dive that used to be there and then getting stuck there because I was so scared and couldn't jump off and had to turn around and make everybody else go down. So much better memories will be made there, I think, without a high dive. Uh, but it looks beautiful. So um, that is, that's it for my report. But I hope you all have a good year. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Erickson. Anybody else? All right. Um, we'll go on to... Real, real quick. Oh, if I could. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to say welcome to everybody as well. We're going to have a fabulous year. Um, looking forward to hearing about everything that's going to take place um, with all of our students, all of our facilities. Uh, I know there's a lot going on. Uh, bear with us on the construction, but at least each phase that's completed, you see the excitement and smiles on people's faces, uh, and that's what it's all about. 
I just wanted to share as well. Um, unfortunately, I was gone almost the month of July. Uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, serving our church. I actually was on a mission trip in Uganda, Africa. Uh, and it was a true blessing, um, is an understatement. Um, to serve the kids, our church serves an orphanage, uh, and just to see the kids and the smiles is, is just unbelievable. Um, their true heart for Jesus Christ is unbelievable. Um, and so that is phenomenal. To learn about their education system over there uh, was rather interesting. If you can afford to go, uh, it is literally Monday through Saturday, seven to five, and they're walking anywhere between two to three kilometers to get to school. So the education for them is very important. Um, they speak several languages, which is very impressive. Uh, English is predominantly the language based on their um, ethnic as well, their tribe as they call it, uh, depending on where they've come from. Um, as a secondary language, or first and second is English. But as I said, it's, it wasn't, I, I was gonna provide a slide presentation, but it, it's not about me, it's about the serving um, and uh, the opportunity to serve uh, and the, 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 the blessings that come with that is unbelievable. Um, I don't know who or what, uh, I've never been on a plane for as long as I have, traveling halfway around the world. Um, it was really interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but it really tests who you are as a person to travel that far. Uh, but again, that was um, it, it was a it was a true blessing. Um, the preparation alone, just to go, uh, the shots that you have to take to go, and the medicine you have to take while you're there, and after you get home, uh, malaria pills is very. Uh, much needed. If you don't take it, then there's a high probability of getting it. Um, but, um, but anyway, aside from all that, the preparation and everything aside, uh, but the kids just uh, were phenomenal. Um, actually, we had three teams that went up. We had two teams go to the north to the refugee camps, uh, just south of the Sudan border, uh, because of all the refugees up there. Uh, and we were at the south. And so we had the opportunity to serve uh, a, a lot of folks. So it was a well-meaning, um, very God-centered, uh, very amazing. Um, I was amazed on our plane ride uh, that we met so many missions, uh, missionaries going over there. Uh, I met a lot of folks from Dallas, from uh, North Carolina or the Carolinas uh, that went out there as well. Uh, and they've been going for many years out there. Uh, on the flight home, met 18 students from Italy who did a 30-day mission trip out there uh, as well. So it was rather interesting to see. Um, in part of our group, we had four teenagers who went. Uh, the people in Uganda are just beautiful, very welcoming, very nice. Um, open you, open arms. Um, it's, uh, the countryside is absolutely gorgeous. Because if you can imagine, you're at the 4,000 foot level on the equator. Uh, and so it's just a beautiful, beautiful countryside. Um, yes, it's an impoverished country, but you know. But aside from that, uh, it, it was a good opportunity. So I just wanted to share. I didn't let a whole lot of folks know I was gone just because I didn't want my family is here and I'm gone on the other side of the world. Uh, so I just wanted to keep it tight-lipped. Only really close friends and family knew I was gone. But. Anyway, I just wanted to share the, the, the tremendous opportunity I had to, to go and, um, and share and, uh, and the amount of people who truly, um, as you know, faith to me is very important, who truly believe in Jesus Christ. And so that's, that's paramount. Uh, and that's the whole reason for going. So I just wanted to share that with you. But uh, if you ever have an opportunity to, to do mission work for whatever church you belong to, please do it. Um, it it's really going to uh, you'll learn a lot about yourself. So, but I just wanted to share that. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Ortega. Thank you for sharing your uh, trip to Uganda. That sounds like an amazing experience. All right. Um, we'll go on to item five, approval of minutes. 
Uh, may I have a motion to I'll approve move. the minutes? I'll move. Uh, Trustee Page, is that you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, do I have a second? Second. Trustee Ortega, uh, do we have any um, discussion? Are we, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion is approved. Um, 601. Okay, we'll move on to item six, public comment. Trustee Page, will you uh, read the guidelines for public comments? Yes. Members of the audience may address the Board of Education on agenda items during consideration of that item and non-agenda items that are within the board's subject matter and jurisdiction. Speaking time is limited to three minutes per speaker with a maximum of 20 minutes per topic. Persons wishing to speak should submit a blue card prior to the meeting. Non-agenda items may neither be acted upon nor discussed by the board, but will be responded to by either telephone, mail, or a subsequent meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, will you please call um, for the public who wish to speak? Yes. Um, the first we have Derek Fis Fitzgerald. Good evening, members of the board, Superintendent Hansen, cabinet, and guests. My name is Derek Fitzgerald, and I'm a senior at Villa Park High School. I want to share with you my experience from last week when I went into senior registration. After receiving my class schedule, I was shocked to find out I did not have theater as one of my elective classes. Instead, I was put in a class as a TA. When I asked why this happened, I was informed that VP no longer offered theater. I have been in theater since first grade at North Canyon Elementary School. Theater has been a huge part of my life and it became one of my passions. I look forward to theater every day and try my best to never miss this class. I can truly say theater makes me happy. Finding out that VP did not have a theater program for me was very hard to take in. And even more so when I realized that my fellow theater classmates would also receive the news of this very sad reality. I cannot believe that in my senior year at VP, our amazing theater program wasn't being offered. Villa Park Theater has changed my life and it has given me a sense of community. I feel like I don't only go to VP, but I'm also a part of the school. I'm not in any competitive sports at VP, so being in theater is my one way of being part of the school. Because being a part of something special makes you special. I have created friendships and collaborated with my peers to create great productions for our school and its community. This program has helped me build my confidence, develop communication skills, work well with others, as well as improve my overall academic abilities. But most of all, VP Theater has helped me build friendships with some amazing, talented scholars. And it will be a big waste of our time to put us in classes we have no interest in. This is extremely unfair, and I hope that those in charge can help us keep the theater program alive at Villa Park High School. Last year, VP Theater was the buzz in orange. And we had lots of support from the community, as well as our friends, families, and other OUSD schools. Our show, Grease, that we performed in the spring was a big hit. This helped the program raise a lot of money for future shows that I hope we, the students, can put on. I have confidence in this board, and I trust that you will help in securing a theater program for VP and its students. I thank you for your time. Calista Brown. Hi, I'm, I'm Calista. I'm a junior at Villa Park High School, the performing arts school, as some have said. I've been involved in theater since fifth grade, and I have some things to say, and I hope that you will listen and think about. When we're in elementary school, we dream about high school and what it will be like. Some of us may dream of playing a sport, when they're in high school or being in band. When I was in elementary school, I dreamt of performing on stage in the school plays and musicals. So if these other kids can go to school and have the opportunity to be the football player they dreamt of or the soccer player they dreamt of, why shouldn't I have the same opportunity to live out my dreams? I dreamt of acting on stage. Why should I be denied of that when others aren't? I never had the desire to be a varsity jock or a cheer captain. I wanted to be the lead in my senior show but now I may never even be able to have that opportunity because what I dreamt of was just never as important as what the next girl did. 
Theater is the one school activity I truly care about and enjoy. It's the reason I wake up in the morning. It's what keeps me motivated. It's what's kept me going. To have that taken away from me is absolutely devastating. This is the first time in the past four years I've had a class schedule where I wasn't enrolled in a theater class. <laughs> Something about this just gives such an empty feeling. <sighs> Sorry. I don't get to go to school and do what I enjoy. I'm going to school because I have to. Not because I want to, not because I enjoy to, simply because I have to. Without this program that is extremely important to me, I will lose the motivation it's always given me. I'll lose the memories it's given me. I'll lose the joy it's given me. I'm asking you to help me, us. I hope that today you can realize that there are no parts of these schools that are any less important than the others. There are still kids in every aspect of the school that care about every program and every class. That's the reason they were made. They wouldn't exist if no one cared, if no one wanted to be in them. And I know you know that there are kids who care about theater and the rest of the performing arts, clearly. The world needs art, and in any shape or form, the world needs it. Without it, where would we be? Where's all your entertainment? Where's all your fun? When you discourage things in school, you, just, you discourage those things in society. If we stop letting kids express themselves in their own ways at school around their peers, what's going to happen when they're all sitting in, excuse me, what's going to happen when they're all grown up and sitting in the seats you are right now? Thank you. Delaney Jessen. Good evening. My name is Delaney Jessen and I'm a junior at Villa Park High School. I'm speaking on behalf of the theater department as an appreciative theater student. The theater program is a creative outlet for those who do not seek comfort in athletic activities such as soccer, football, baseball, and many others. This elective firmly builds students' communication and social skills while also helping develop their overall character. It is a general learning experience for all of us where we broaden our mentalities with constructive criticism and decisive improvisation games. Theater is a safe and welcoming environment where varieties of students from all different backgrounds and ethnicities form and strive as one. It is a class that differs from the other standard high school courses, where we come together to work and build meaningful relationships with one another and don't just listen to profuse lectures and work independently on our own assignments. Us theater students, one way or another, bring out the best in each other. We enjoy watching each other perform because we know that our whole hearts and spirits are embedded into our performances. Students that are mentally and physically unable to attend to athletics find comfort in the fact that theater is an easy and healthy solution for them. These challenged people deserve to have a creative and positive outlet that is welcoming and affectionate, for our past principal had assured that the theater department would remain intact and inclusive as always. However, this elective has been endlessly threatened school year after school year to shut down. Our countless statements and rationalizations have been continuously seized and blocked out, just like our previous theater teacher's position at Villa Park. The dramatic arts needs a permanent individual that is willing to aid us with our passion and attend to our occasional quirkiness. We had been promised a sturdy theater program that would remain long lasting for generations of thespians, but now you could see the arduous position that we stand in today. Due to this program being shut down, I've lost a connection with my creative side with the dramatic arts and a homely place to go to at the end of a long school day. It was a place to let go for a while and decompress to where I could be my true authentic self and I knew that I wouldn't be judged by my peers around me. It was a place for all of us to go to, to filter to and relax. So we may not be scoring thrilling touchdowns or hitting solid home runs, but we experience the thrill of performing in our own special way. So I hope you are considering reassembling the theater program to its former glory, because this elective deserves so much more than just being shut down along with our voices. Thank you. Madison Humphreys. Good evening. I've been a part of various theater programs since I was two years old. Overall, I've been in 22 different productions, and I can say with 100% certainty that my most memorable, best produced shows were performed at Villa Park High School. I transferred to Villa Park because of the theater program. Whilst attending another school, I would hang out with my friends over at VPHS during the rehearsal for their musical. The director actually gave notes to the directors, got them props, costume, etc. It was way more professional than my current theater program at the time. 
At my previous school, I had been bullied and had no friends. But by being at those rehearsals, I found a community of people, people who genuinely cared about one another. I finally didn't feel so alone. I remember the night I came home bawling to my parents. I hated how my life was going. I wanted to go to this school and be in the CEDAR program with all my new friends. I transferred the very next school year. I was in the theater class, as well as the after-school play and musical, the very musical that made over $9,000 in profit, which most of the funding for the show came from the director and the student's parents' own pockets. In just that one year, I made so many friends and my life became so much more joyful. But then our principal did something crazy. He got rid of the theater program. He decided it wasn't important, but it is very important. Theater helps people of all ages find themselves and find a community that they can fit in with. I only do one extracurricular, and that is theater. Without it, I don't have a place where I fit in. And over 1,000 people who have signed our petition to bring back theater agree with that statement. Not fitting in is a terrible feeling, and I don't want anyone to ever feel that way. So please bring back VPHS drama. Ava Sanchez. Hello everyone, my name is Ava Sanchez and I would like to speak and share some words on behalf of Villa Park High School's drama department. As going into the 2022-2023 school year, I will be a sophomore and it will be my second year at the school. From my personal experience, I had begun my journey with musical theater back when I was in elementary school. As a kid growing up, I never really had any huge hobbies or interests. I was someone you could consider extremely introverted, and quite frankly, if you were to ask me if I would have pictured myself being a part of a program that would require me to sing, act, and dance starting as a 10-year-old, the simple answer I most likely would have been able to give you was absolutely not, or no way. I remember when I was in about third grade being nine years old, and I remember I was walking after school, helping my teacher at the time, and walked into our auditorium in a way. Our school was performing Alice in Wonderland as our spring musical during that year, and I think actually my elementary school was one of the only schools with the ability to perform two musicals as a year, as most would do one. We would do one in the fall and one then in the spring. I wasn't able to be a part of the show at the time, but seeing the props, the backdrops, the colorful costumes, seeing them rehearse, I was just in absolute awe. The next year I decided to join musical theater. I paid the tuition we needed to, then audition, and began to get started. It was an ensemble part, but it was never focused on me on the role I may, re I may receive. I just was more excited to meet new people and put on a performance. Little did I truly realize how much happiness and joy it brought into my life. I started to become a familiar face and name there as I continued to do it for the next few years while I was at the school, which then proceeded to middle school and to my freshman year. It was a place where I could let loose and never worried about people judging me or making fun of me. I never thought I would be able to be a part of a community or feel truly accepted. I'm sure many of us here tonight have had our own experiences of feeling like we don't belong, being told mean comments about things we have no control over, or for the very people we are by making assumptions about our character. You name it, there will always be a reason that people will try to bring you down or judge you. However, finding a passion and a hobby, even if it's just one, that truly brings you joy in life can change your life in so many ways. I never would have pictured myself becoming the person that I am today had it not been for theater. Some of you may remember me from last year's performance of Grease portraying the role of Rizzo. Throughout the time of the show, it definitely was a lot of work in progress. It had its great moments and others not so much. Had auditions and started rehearsing in December and then our performances were in April. A lot of us came from sports and non-sports, but we all shared one thing in common, having the passion and love for something that made us happy. We may not have had moments, um, had the easiest, time to work with, but even with the hard moments, we still grew and made memories as well as wonderful friends that I will never forget or feel resentful about joining from day one when I joined the cast. You may know VPHS as a very athletic school with amazing sport programs or teams. With theater though, you can be someone who loves to just do all the things that comes with the program, or if you're not into performing, you can be a part of the tech crew. There's always something for everyone no matter what. I truly hope with all of my heart we can bring this back to, for not only current Spartans, but also future kids that will come to the school and want to, be a jo want to be able to join a program such as this and feel overjoyed to know it's an opportunity for them. Thank you. Bella Lillis. I'm 
sorry. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Mirabella Lilith, and I am a junior at Villa Park High School. I understand that we are here to discuss the severe injustice that taking away the theater program would be to the student body as a whole. However, I would like to take this time to explain to you what theater means to me. I could stand here and rattle off statistics on how students who participate in theater become better public speakers, forge lifelong friendships, and has helped bring so many kids out of their shells. While all of that is true, that isn't why I love theater. I had always done theater, but I had never truly understood it until last year. Like many others, COVID had taken my creativity and had diminished um, my fire that I had. I walked around like a zombie my freshman year. I had nothing to do, nothing to look forward to, until I saw theater's performance of Beauty and the Beast. I knew from right then and there that that was what I was going to do. The following year, I auditioned for the fall play. I was astonished that I was actually cast as a lead. Looking back, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that being in that play single-handedly jump-started my creativity. It gave me back that passion and fire that I had been missing for so long. I was more confident, the sky was bluer, and I felt whole again. More so, the people I met through that program are some of the most passionate, dedicated, and caring people I know. Many other programs will claim to be a family. I disagree. I believe that only a handful of programs can actually live up to that promise, and theater is one. There, when you are a part of theater, you will never be alone. There will always be a friendly place, face in the crowd. Taking theater away as an option for students is a monumental mistake. You would be robbing them of the experiences and memories they could have. Thank you for listening, and I implore you to think about what I said. Holly and Alex Schaefer. Greetings, member of the board. It's very nice to see you today. Uh, my name is Alexandria Schaefer, and this is my mom, Holly Schaefer. Uh, I've been doing theater for almost half of my life now, and it really helped me come out of my shell when I was once a really introverted kid. Now I'm actually pretty social and can interact with people. <laughs> Um, I had the honor of playing Mary Warren in The Crucible for our fall play last year, and I really enjoyed the part. I had a lot of fun doing it, despite the play's really, to really dark um, topic. Uh, I also have met lots of really amazing people through theater who are, just, who are super passionate and some of the most amazing people I've ever met. And I, and I think it would be really unfortunate to take away that opportunity from future Spartans of VPHS. So as Alex said, um, my name is Holly Schaefer, and I have a set of twins starting their 2022-23 junior year at Villa Park High School. My daughters have very different extracurricular school activities, interests, as well as academic needs. We were happy to hear that our home school, Villa Park High School, was a very diverse school offering something for every student. I want to start out by thanking Villa Park High School and Orange Unified School District for offering the many types of AP honor classes that are challenging my daughter, Jamie. Villa Park High School also has an award-winning high school softball team, which Jamie is a part of and made a good core of group friends. With these opportunities, Villa Park High School offered her, and by working hard, she is already having interests and connections with Division III Ivy League softball schools coaches, such as MIT, over the summer. I thank Villa Park High School, and I thank them very much for giving her this opportunity. So as you can tell, then, when uh, registration happened, we were on a high with Jamie, and then this was happening with Alexandria. Um, she isn't into sports, but found her passion and love for drama. She has been in many plays at Noel Kenny Elementary School and Sierra Villa Middle School. When she registered for ninth grade, there was a good vibe that Villa Park High School was going to expand their theater program. They got a very new, in, enthusiastic theater drama teacher that was teaching theater tech one and two, and also being the drama teacher director for the fall play and spring musicals. Even with the COVID challenges, this teacher was very creative and gave them online theater assignments, which was very good for Alex's mental health. 
Um, and, and they even pulled off a spring musical, Beauty and the Beast. Last year was such a great year for Alex. She was in Theater 2 Tech and was involved in showcases. She loved the serious dramatic role of Mary Warren in The Crucibles for the fall play. It was amazing to see these teenagers handle all the serious dialogue in the play. Um, uh, they, uh, and then they also um, advertised the back to school night um, where they did some Grease uh, songs for the incoming freshmen. Um, Alex even shared with them the sense of belonging and increased confidence. Uh, the new principal of Villa Park High School emailed he wants to get together with our core group of supportive drama parents and I hope this happens and the solution is worked out. Thank you. Maverick Nestor Delaney. Hi, I'm Delaney. I'm reading on behalf of Maverick Nestor. Good evening. My name is Maverick Nestor. I've been, I've been in plays at Sarah Villa Middle School and then at Villa Park for the past three years. I recently moved to North Carolina because, of my, because my dad's work relocated us. Otherwise, I would have been at registration last week hearing that the theater program at my home school was in danger of being shut down again. I couldn't help but feel like I had to speak up. To make it even worse, the fact is that it is happening in twice in two years is a bit unnerving. Having played competitive baseball for the early 12 years of my life, I had never had to speak up about my team being shut down, and theater is very similar to the sport in the sense that we spend countless hours rehearsing even, and even spend time at home practicing over and over to make sure that we can do our part to help support the cast or team in putting out an enjoyable show. What I'm trying to say is that it may look like just some kids dancing and singing on stage, but what the audience doesn't see what isn't on all the billboards. What has hundreds of people in just Villa Park sing, signing our petition to keep the program is the, the, is the family that you form backstage. My closest friendships and relationships has sprouted from the experience of coming closer together to make something beautiful out of nothing but some props, blood, sweat, and tears. I find it hard to understand how we can fund some sports teams and clubs in our schools without missing a beat. But when it comes to just a program that basically runs itself, it gets put on the chopping block first. Just this last week, I had started at a brand new high school where I was welcomed into the Honors Musical Theater program with open arms due to my resume, which was established at Orange Unified School District. Here I am, walking in from hearing that my program of its origin is being shut down, and to learn that my new program is fully funded by the district, with not one pack, but two fully-sized performing centers. A program that has three rehearsal rooms, and a program that wasn't far off from what I had at Villa Park, a room full of new friends, not because I forced myself into conversations or made it a point to form something with everyone in the room, but because even across the country, theater is all that some kids have. Kids whose ensemble is more like a family. Kids who aren't able to form relationships with people because they are misunderstood. Kids whose only way to escape from the harsh reality of everyday life is to get on stage and sing about it. Kids who are just looking to make a living of all their talents and strengths. Every time you see a movie, you're looking at the result of arts. Every time you hear a show tune, you're hearing the hard work of an actor and actress. Now, I'm sure my three minutes are almost up, but I have, all I have to say is I urge, you keep you to, I urge you to do the right thing for all these kids for the upcoming classes and to vote to keep the program. Please say Villa Park Theater. Greg Goodlander. It's not about theater, I'm sorry. Good evening, President Yamasaki, board members, Dr. Hansen, and cabinet. For those of you in the audience who don't know me, I'm Greg Gunnader, the president of OUEA, the teachers union. We're off to a new school year. I'm being honest when I share that I was very excited to see my students at Orange High School. While I am a union leader, I always tell people that the best part of my day is teaching. I'm super proud to represent and lead our teachers and other certificated staff. Many have shared with me how great it is to be in the classroom with students. We are all hopeful and kind of expecting a more positive and productive school year than the past two years. I do want to recognize that many teachers didn't really stop working over the summer. Many attended professional development, others worked summer school. I know because I still got calls about work concerns even when I was trying to be on vacation with my family. 
But it is good to be back, and I hope that OUEA and OUSD can continue our collaboration to provide the best education possible to our students. Let's have a great year. Thank you for your time. Catherine Sullivan. Um, I'm a teacher at El Medina High School. My name is Catherine Sutherland. I've been there eight years, and I have two kids also at El Medina. Um, I'm going to speak about special education, but I just want to congratulate all of you guys for being able to come up and speak. And I think your program is really valuable. Theater, obviously, is key for many people. So I'm on your side. Um, what I, I've come before the board about a year ago to talk about our high turnover rate in special education. And I know this isn't um, unusual nationally, but we are really hurting. Um, we started the year down uh, three teachers. Um, we are hoping to replace them. But in the meantime, the special education teachers that remain have to take on most of that caseload. So I know there's a question whether or not we can do 28 per year and what that means. What it means to me is that you would be able to service 28 students per year 28 total, not 28, you have one that comes, you do a meeting, that kid gets pulled off your caseload, you get another one, and suddenly you're doing more than 28. Um, we each teach five classes now, we get one prep period, that period covers preparing for our co-taught classes, most of us have multiple co-teachers, preparing for our specialized academic instruction classes, uh, grading, parent contacts, plus case managing, running IEPs, testing, all the paperwork for IEPs. We are exhausted. It has barely started. Um, I didn't expect the year to be this hard um, when I agreed to continue working here um, in the spring. And every year it seems like we agree to work in the spring and what happens in the fall is, um, I'm gonna say exponentially harder. It almost is, it's, it's significantly harder every year. So um, I'm committed obviously to, to working here. I know you're probably wondering why. Um, my, I live in this district, I believe in the school, I believe in the students that I have. I love those students. My own kids go to the school. I am grateful for the school and things it's given them. Um, so I, I just, I'm speaking for myself. I'm also up here hoping that the remaining seven of us on the team um, who are exhausted and it kind of a mess to start the year, I can kind of help support them too and we can come to some, we can get some help somewhere. I know the district has some resources. I just don't want to hear, well, we can't hire anybody. <laughs> See you later. So I, I should have done more theater. I'd have been a better public speaker. You guys are amazing. <laughs> but. Um, I did, I'm just asking for help, that's all. Thank you for listening. Gary, and please help me pronounce your last name. Schlossnagel. Schlossnagel. Thank you. Spartans, tremendous respect for your plight and for your passion. Oh, I, I hope you are heard. I hope you are heard. Uh, good evening, uh, Board President Yamasaki, Board Members, Dr. Hansen, Cabinet and Community, and colleagues. My name is Gary Schlossnagel. I'm a 30-year educator, the last 22 as a mathematics teacher at El Medina High School. I am speaking tonight in support of our special education teachers. Each year, we have tremendous turnover, and their workload is suffocating. I plead with you to look into the plight of these overworked professionals. To paraphrase a line from a, a great movie, the movie As Good As It Gets, they're drowning here and you're describing the water. I would ask that you please, please send in the lifeguards. Thank you. That concludes public comment. Thank you, Trustee Page. I uh, just wanna- Madam, Madam President. I like to say something. Oh, okay. Um, I know this is not what we normally do, but uh, as a parent of uh, two kids in theater, um, I'd like to know uh, from staff what has been discussed about uh, the theater program, if anything, at, at VP. 
Well, what I'm aware of is that they're attempting to hire a theater arts teacher, teacher to continue the program. So the program, I think uh, Mr. McHouston, your principal, has reached out to um, the theater parents and the students and told them that they are not going to shut down the program. As soon as they get a teacher in place, the intent is to schedule you in that class as your elective. So we, we're working to get a teacher in place for you and there is no, no um, intent to shut the program down. It's a wonderful program. We all agree with everything you said and we support all the students and we'll be working very hard to get a teacher for you. Do we have a, do we have a timeline on that, getting the teacher? Um, yes, we have a timeline. So the um, recruitment ends on Monday. So we'll be doing hiring next week. And I do also want to um, also say that we want to grow the program. So um, I'll be meeting with Mr. Rick Houston. Actually, I have a meeting with him tomorrow to discuss that. And I'd like to meet with all of you alongside Mr. McHouston and our other leadership team, because we would like to grow the program. In fact, these past two weeks, we've been putting together some vertical articulation with our VAPA teachers from elementary through secondary so that we can see what we can do to grow our programs across the district. So that's our commitment to you. I applaud all of you for being here. All of you showed just phenomenal leadership, articulate young um, adults, and I applaud you for being here, and I'll be here. I'm with, I will pledge to work with you to make sure that we are growing our program. So thank you for being here. So, so a, a teacher might be in place within three to four weeks? Oh, before that. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to thank all the students and parents and everybody for coming out to speak tonight. Um, typically, we, you know, don't respond to um, people who come to speak, but I think um, you know that your concerns are being heard. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go on to action item uh, number seven. Yes, 7B. Um, it's 7B, so that would be Mr. Harvey. Yes, Mr. Harvey is going to be uh, covering uh, three items for you tonight. That is emphasis of our um, uh, efficient utilization of our fiscal capital and developing pri private, partner, uh, private um, partnerships to help grow our programs and provide funding to the district. Um, so, Mr. Harvey. Good evening, President Yamasaki, board members, uh, members of cabinet, our community here, and the people uh, watching online. Recently, uh, one of our consultants working with the energy service provider notified the district about an exciting opportunity uh, for grant, uh, for grant funds to assess our heating, air conditioning, and ventilation, ventilation systems, as well as provide plumbing fixtures uh, for projects that we're working on. And as Dave always says, if it's free, it's for me, correct? So we're gonna make sure to take every opportunity we can at Orange Unified to maximize the funds available for, not only for projects, to, but to put back into uh, safety and the health of our students. Excuse me real quick. Ernie, do you mind switching the lights, please? Thank you. And you can see on this slide what Cal shape is, and that, that's the fund, uh, the grant fund that we're looking at. And the California Schools Healthy Air Plumbing Efficiency Program called CalShape provides funding to upgrade heating, air conditioning systems in public schools and replaces non-compliant plumbing fixtures. So where does this come from? CalShape was organized, uh, authorized, I should say, upon the approval of the California State Assembly Bill 841 in September of 2020 spells out a very structured, it's the most structured grant program I've ever seen, in fact, um, for work on the assessment of HVAC systems. Uh, CalShape plans was further developed during the pandemic with plumbing fixture credits added and then uh, released in late 2021. The plans uh, feature a separate application for processes for ventilation and plumbing, and the district is interested in both programs and the significant savings that they carry. So what, is, what are the benefits to us? What are we gonna gain off of this grant and why should we apply? CalShape helps address concerns that people have, that have had during the pandemic, including uh, the efficiency and air quality produced by the district's HVAC systems. Although we have taken steps to ensure good quality 
uh, of our air in all USD, OUSD classrooms with the purchase of over 2,000 HEPA filter air purifiers. We want to ensure our, our main building systems are working efficiently and that they're providing the filtration required to meet health standards. The program under round one and round two will provide assessments to all Title I schools and allow for the installation of carbon uh, dioxide uh, monitors and detectors as well. Um, I, that should be monoxide, I'm sorry, carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, round three of the funding will help the remaining schools. So we're applying for all three rounds and what we'll tell you right now is basically for round one and two, so there may be additional funding beyond that, but we know what we can uh, are applying for now is um, a set amount and we'll talk about that. All in total, the district would be eligible to receive approximately $3.5 million in funding for these ventilation assessments, CO2 monitors, and subsequent HVAC repairs. Are there any questions about the ventilation portion of the grant? I have a question. Um, when you say it's eligible for subsequent repairs, is, is that also eligible for brand new systems? They only give us a certain amount for repairs, so it's really in the assessment. The okay. assessment is the major cost, and, and Mr. Rivera could tell you, as well as Mr. Niquette, who's in our m and department, it's very expensive labor to go through the HVAC system, check all the belts, check the coils, the cooling system, the heating system, everything. It takes a lot of time, and time is obviously money, so this is a huge amount of savings. Now, a lot of our sites have received new air conditioning systems in the last 20 years. So we still have life cycle in most of our systems. Some of the systems are getting older and we're replacing those through uh, other programs, but the assessment of our units is really the important first step. And it was in the ESSER plan, as Mr. Rivera showed, as our kind of fifth um, phase. Right. That fifth phase was the assessment of all remaining air conditioning units that we have had upgrade in the last 20 years to see where they sit. So a lot of these systems within the last 10 years are, have been replaced and uh, don't need a huge amount of repairs. Some will. So there is some money for repairs, but this would hopefully be a springboard for us to get additional funding um, in other, either for additional ESSER funding or whatever it may be in the future to get money towards repairing and replacing units. So these, will, these funds will be focused on whichever ones basically we can retain right. that are newer, on the newer end. Right. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay, then the plumbing grant, in terms of the plumbing grant under CalShape, this funding would also be very timely considering the dozens of projects that we have in renovating restrooms that are part of the ESSER plan that we presented to you previously. Um, the grant will allow for funding to purchase water saving toilets, urinals, and sinks for our Title I schools in rounds one and two, and then all remaining schools in round three, just like the ventilation program. We are currently eligible for $150,000 in funding in rounds one and two for the purchase of plumbing fixtures for these projects. Are there any questions about the plumbing? Portion? One more question. Sure. <laughs> so since we've already done all of these replacements because we've been doing tons of restroom renovations, can this money go to basically reimburse us for what we've done or will this be going forward? It's new fixtures. Okay. So, and in some, of the, in some of the cases it has to be a specific fixture. So we're working with them on that on what can be accepted and installed for the program. So some of the stuff is not our standard, so we have to make some you know, concessions in that way. But a lot of it um, is, is very close. So this could not pay for work we've already done, but we have a lot of future projects as, as uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring to you and show you updates in the near future. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the timeline for the project, uh, we're gonna submit the application. This is part of that application is a resolution by the board supporting this. If you do support this tonight, then we would we'd take those um, approval, take that approval uh, uh, with the resolution and apply for the funds. Um, we have till October 31st to apply for those funds. Uh, then in November, um, our hope would be to have the approval and then go into a bidding process. Uh, this is a million one, as you, or I'm sorry, 3.5 million and uh, 150,000, so it's above the bid limit. Uh, the plumbing fixtures, 
that'll be part of something that we provide in the future. So those are tangible. We can get those and warehouse those or get those whenever we um, get those funds. But the ventilation is a labor intensive process. So we will have to go to bid for that process. So once we go to bid and go through the process, um, we hope to have uh, the low bid vendor for you in March. And then in May, we would, uh, this summer really, and if we can start in, in May, we will on some locations, start with the work and then uh, finish it off um, you know, within the year's time or a little bit less than a year's time. So that's the timeline. And uh, the summary would be if the applications for round uh, one through three, like I mentioned, uh, are being accepted up to October 31st. Title I schools in, the, in rounds one and two, and then more schools eligible in round three. So we'll come back to you and discuss round three. We may need another resolution for that. Um, OUSD eligibility based on, uh, is based on our unduplicated pupil count. Uh, so that's why it's Title I to start, and that's the initial 3.5 million, uh, but there could be more. And same with the plumbing, also uh, based on UDP, and that would be uh, you know, in, the same, uh, in the same timeline as discussed. So we are recommending to adopt both resolutions, 622-23 and 722-23 to apply for these funds um, to get over $3 million for our future projects. So Mr. Harvey, should they take each of these separately? Yeah, each you would resolution? take each, each resolution separately, starting with 622-23. Okay. All right, do we have any questions? If not, I'll move it. Okay, so um, Trustee Ortega moves uh, resolution 6 Dash twenty two twenty three. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. Trustee Ramsey seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion pass passes. Uh, Six dash zero one. Um, so we'll go to item seven C and we'll. Um, I'll ask for a motion. I'll move it. Trustee Ortega moves, second? I'll second. Trustee Ramsey seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, any opposed? All right, motion passes 601. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Harvey disappeared. Where did he go? <laughs> <laughs> I had a oh. <laughs> so this next item requir required a wardrobe change. Well, first I so. want to thank you for taking the opportunity in researching outside funding sources. <laughs> Anytime. Like, Where did he go? <laughs> Anytime. Go He's Dodgers. going above and beyond the, beyond the call of duty here with the, the outfit well, for the yes. next presentation. I'm a giant That's Dodgers fan. That hat's only allowed for the presentation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, there'll be a lot. There'll be a lot. Uh, you know, around a lot longer into this this season than <laughs> other teams. <laughs> All right. All right. So we'll go to item seven D: acceptance of pledge agreement for five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, Mr. Rivera, did you want to start? Uh, well, I don't have my hat or jersey on, so I'm going to defer to you. So the Dodgers are my favorite team, so this is a very exciting moment for me. I'm also wearing uh, number 24 for Kobe Bryant, so I'm all LA, but I love Orange County. So uh, we want to talk to you tonight about a very generous donation that we've been talking about for quite some time behind the scenes, and now we want to bring it forward and talk a little bit about what that means. Uh, what it will provide for the El Medina uh, Athletics uh, Department as well as for our district. And it's a really exciting time to just to be here and talk about it because Freddie Freeman is uh, an up and, you know, not an up and coming player. He is a, a already established, amazing all star player that uh, has come to the Dodgers and also is a member of our alumni at El Medina High School. So we're really happy to present, you know, present this tonight. World Series, World Series champion, correct. And maybe this year. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of history, um, 
Mr. Freeman, uh, Freddie Freeman and his dad have expressed interest in this project. They wanted to donate something to El Medina High School to benefit the program. They have given things, little things to the program over time, but nothing like what we're gonna talk about today. We collaborated with uh, Coach Kleiner, who is the head varsity baseball coach. Yeah. He's in attendance right here. So uh, Mr. Kleiner and I met with, um, first of all, with the principal Jill Katavis at the time, and there were a lot of things to discuss because putting a new building out there in the field is not an easy task. Uh, and that's what Mr. Freeman wanted to do. A, a new clubhouse was going to be built. Um, so we collaborated with them, met, at, met on the site, and went over some of the challenges. Um, the Freemans got involved. They wanted to find out more about the placement of the building. So we actually met Mr. Um, Freeman Sr. at the facility and walked with, uh, and that's Freddie's dad, and walked with him and had um, discussions about where he thought it would a good place it would be, what are some things that he had hoped to give to the program, and uh, continued to walk around the site and find a good spot for what would be a clubhouse that they would like to donate. So uh, after that uh, meeting, we had an architect um, get involved for conceptual drawings just to give an idea of what this may look like. Um, and then we shared those plans with Mr. Kleiner, um, with uh, Mr. Freeman Sr. and with Freddie himself, and they all agreed that it was a good fit for their program. So uh, we are, haven't developed too much more. We have some conceptual drawings to show you tonight, uh, but that's uh, the donation that we're discussing is the $500,000 to provide a new clubhouse for varsity baseball. So here's what that modular, and it's a modular building, um, but it's a very nice modular building that um, will look like any other building that you may see, but is, um, is 1,400 square feet, 1,440. Uh, it, it has a coach's office. Um, you could see a storage area there. Uh, has a very uh, nice team meeting area. Uh, lockers would be surrounding the space. Um, just a, something that the team has really never had before um, in this type of meeting space. So you can see the layout of that um, building. We originally wanted to put it on the other side of the, which would be the um, third base line, uh, where some of the dugouts are and um, some containers that sit there. But in order to get there for a fire engine, it would be a very difficult project to do and cost quite a bit of money. So we felt that if we put it close enough to the Science Center, where it has an established fire lane, uh, where it has um, access to get into it from the campus, we felt that that was a nice uh, change because now you can get into this facility after built and go through um, this section from campus and get all the way to where the fan areas are. So walkways will be involved. And that does, you don't have to go through the team room to do that or this uh, clubhouse to do that. You would, um, you would go around it. And that's the walkways that you see there. And it's an ADA path, pathageway um, through that area as well. The batting cages would be slightly in, uh, enlarged as well. Uh, that's something that the, the um, team really wanted to um, request, something that they've been talking about for a long time. Uh, the bullpen area there would be slightly um, improved um, with some new things. And then uh, the, the building itself, the clubhouse, would be installed in the corner there. The one major thing that we'd have to do to make that happen is uh, move a storm drain. Uh, but it's not a huge, um, huge amount of work to do that. It's going to be um, relocated within the same type of area there. So that's the general plan. A lot of things come with this when you talk about DSA, um, which is our Division of the State Architect. They will require some other things to be done. So we'll be assessing that, probably drinking some drinking fountains and, so, you know, like we said, walkway type of work. But once we get through with that discussion with DSA, we'll, um, we'll have a full idea of what those additional items are. But we are factoring that into our total budget. So the agreed upon um, scope would be the purchase and installation of the modular clubhouse, uh, new batting cages. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the code upgrades. Um, the board would give input on how we would brand the building, uh, maybe how it would look. So we're going to bring some plans in so that you can take a look at that. Um, and through our Friday letters, we'll continue to communicate on how the design process is going. There's also a item on the board agenda and consent for PBK architects, 
and they'll continue to develop this uh, plan. Expected completion date would be the summer of 2023. Um, it does take some time. We would like to get it done sooner than that for the school year, but we have a little bit of a, a start that we're, you know, we're, we're waiting on whether the donation was going to come in or not. Uh, we, we had great conversations and we'd love to get it done by February, but it's probably not possible. That's the start of the, the baseball season, but it's not possible because of going to DSA and having to get the approvals needed. So unfortunately, it'll be after the season, but the next season, the students will have the full, and over the summer, will have the full capability to use um, this clubhouse. Total project costs of 1.1 million. So the staff is recommending uh, that we accept this generous donation. We don't usually come up during uh, the time and talk about gifts and donations. They're kind of hidden in consent agenda because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to, we, we love getting gifts, but we don't want to embellish upon that. But this is a really important one, I think. Um, it gives something to the students that they've never had before. It's a very large donation. So we're very happy to um, work with the Freemans and work with Coach Kleiner and uh, make a wonderful facility. And then also look at our other facilities on campus as well and see how we can improve those as far as softball as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harvey. Don't disappear on me this time. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions before we go on? Um, Trustee Page? Yeah, it's working now. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Just one question about um, the difference, because it's gonna cost a million point one. Um, just for the community to understand, we have the pledge, and so how is the district going to support the rest of that? Yeah, we talked to Mr. Freeman about that, and he felt that the best donation was to, to the, the highest part of the project, which is the, the building itself costs $500,000. So that modular building uh, and its installation aren't covered in that. The, just the, the building itself is covered in that cost. Uh, the rest of the project would be site work, grading the area, the moving of the storm drain that we talked about, um, any walkway work that we have to get to the to the building and then to get all the way to the back of the backstop area that we talked about and then any of the um, other ADA work that may be associated with that we're putting a cost on that as well so railing fencing whatever may be needed drinking fountains things like that are kind of in that that infrastructure cost and then you have costs for um, some of the materials the lockers for example some of the furniture that's that's minor but really it's in that infrastructure cost and then the batting cages to expand that batting cages, that's material and labor costs to expand that out. Um, so that's what's wrapped up in the other 600,000 are all those costs. Uh, Mrs. Page, <clears throat> we are completing the process of closing out the Elmo pool. Uh, you haven't seen very much come through in terms of change orders. So we have built contingencies for the pool uh, cost contingencies that have not materialized. So at this point, we're anticipating that once we close out the project, that the savings from that project can help co-fund this project from the district standpoint. Thank you. Quick question. Anyway. <laughs> One suggestion I would make is for the coach and the team for the branding rights, let them choose what that would be called, um, opposed to us. You know, it's going to be their ball field. It's going to be the coach's ball field. It's going to be the kids' ball field or the students' ball field. So that would be mine. You know, to the board to offer that to them to have the naming rights for that, whether it's the Freddie Freeman field. You know, what whatever it happens to be. But I would leave it up to them to come forward and say that's their choice, not our choice, because it's their field. Good point. That was my only, not okay. question, but. All right, anybody else have any comments? I just wanna thank you for our action items basically being gifts of 400, I mean, $4 million. It's nice to vote on that tonight rather than mm -hmm. spending $4 million, so thank you. No problem. Mr. Vera is trying to make me more accepting. I have a question. Um, Trustee. Quick, quick question. Any uh, autograph baseballs come with all this? 
if we approve. We could probably, we could probably work something out. <laughs> just checking. Mm -hmm. But I, wanna, I just want to point out, too, that Mr. Freeman is aware of tonight. Um, he's been interviewed by the Orange County Register, who was out in Milwaukee today at his, at his game this afternoon. And so there should be a nice piece in the paper about this so you can read more about it. But I'm sure as we work closer, I, I can work something out for you. I think, I think I'm Mr. Kidding, Kleiner, I'm kidding. Mr. Kleiner can work something out. <laughs> These days for the professionals, the, the whole autograph thing is just a can of worms. Yeah. So I'm kidding. You'll have to declare it on your Form 7. Yeah, I know. That's true. That's true. And, and the value of his right now is like, oh, boy. We, we are hoping Big declaration. to coordinate a PR event where they will, uh, the donation, the big check, will be given to us, maybe at home plate, Dodger Stadium. We'll have the kids there. Someone will need to drive the kids, so I make sure to, I will make sure to accompany our bus drivers. Uh, <laughs> so if we need some additional chaperones, I'll ask for volunteers. Oversight. Yeah, oversight. Right. Yeah. Board president? <laughs> we need supervision, that's for sure. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Yes. Excellent work. Thank you so much um, for your um, presentation. And yes, and I just wanted to add that this is very exciting for us. It's not often that we get gifts. And um, I am a Dodger fan because I grew up across the street from Dodger Stadium and I used to walk up there as a kid all the time. It was literally walking distance from my house. So, um, and my brother used to work there. He was a, um, he was, no, he was, a, he was the peanut guy. Yeah, he, he made a ton of money because it was commission based. But anyways, um, I am very excited about this and I'm very ex excited to have a Dodger in our midst. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm an Angel fan too. We <laughs> Sports. Can too. We have a lot of players out of our schools right? that have made yes. it to the big leagues. Yes. So we ought to be proud of all of them. Uh, yes. Madam Pre President, if I may. Uh, with all our, from our own colleague, from all the colleagues on the board here, please tell Mr. Freeman thank you. Uh, on behalf of the entire board, I, I would think that everybody here is, we want to give him a big thank you. Yes. So, um, I will call for a mo motion. I'll move it. Uh, Trustee Ortega moves. Do we have a second? I'll second. Trustee Erickson seconded. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, motion passes. Six zero one. Did you want to come up, Josh? So I can shake your hand and we can make it official. All right. And they need. And he needs a photo. I think um, Kevin's going to take a photo here. So, yeah. <laughs> we need a cut out of Freddie Freeman. <laughs> All right. We'll go on to item eight, uh, 8A, Special Education Program, overview of the 2021-2022 school year. So we have Dr. Singh here with her staff, which she will introduce. Welcome, Dr. Singh. Thank you. Um, good evening, President Yamasaki, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Hansen, Executive Cabinet, staff, and community. We're really, really honored to be here this evening. And I have um, with me Ms. Cassie McKenna, who's one of our coordinators, and um, Dr. Granite, who is the administrator for special ed. Um, before we go into um, our presentation, I just want to make a comment that um, the El Medina administrative team is actively seeking replacement interviewing actively in coordination with our um, special education team. So it is uh, quite a challenge nationwide, but we're actively seeking um, to fill the positions. So um, we'll go on with our presentation. So we would like to share with you today some key metrics for student access and performance. 
which are important um, to understanding the strength and effectiveness of our programs. We're very pleased to report that there has been a consistent increase in graduation rates for students with disabilities. We've climbed to the second place in the county in this metric with a 10% increase in graduation rates over the last four years. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also very, very pleased to report that OUSD is a proud recipient of the state's workability grant. And 82% um, of our transition aid students were provided with vocational training through this program. Very effective um, grant that we've received and um, in supporting the transition age youth. Additionally, uh, we would like to report and we're delighted to report that all of uh, the three CDE established post-secondary outcomes for students with disabilities were met for our district. Um, and um, not on the screen, but we also grew in our college and career indicator and we exceeded the state established target for parental um, participation as well. So good growth in those areas. Our next slide here breaks down the graduation rates over the, over the past four years. I think the trajectory on the screen is a celebration for all of us. So this next slide is emblematic of our department's mission and purpose under the IDEA, to provide students with uh, an equitable education um, alongside their typical developing peers, right? And um, as you can see, five years ago, um, we weren't meeting any of our three targets that CDE sets for participation uh, with typical peers. Um, and we're pleased to report, and very proud to report that, you know, with the um, support of our board and our, you know, dedicated school teams, um, this year, we're on track to meet all three of our least restrictive environment uh, indicators. Um, as a department, we're always continually looking for creative ways to serve our students with disabilities. Our spring break uh, credit recovery support boot camp was born of this innovation. This program has had significant impact in getting our students back on track to graduate along with their peers at their comprehensive high schools without needing to leave their high school campuses. This past year, we focused on enhancing two strands of our regionalized programs. The Bridges program serves our students with the most significant needs. We've invested in infrastructure, resources, and professional training for our staff to better equip our students for their adult life, building on independence, self-advocacy, and tailor-made communications to support their future goals. On your screen um, are some of the programmatic enhancements that we've uh, developed this past year, including micro-enterprises, to align with our hospitality, horticulture, and entrepreneurship CTE pathways. These micro enterprises make CTE accessible to students with greater needs and allows these students' successes to be captured as CCR completers and support our, their future employment and vocational goals. As a sneak peek, right, this year we are expanding these individual uh, micro enterprises uh, to include uh, pathway competencies. Additionally, also on the screen, um, we've added sensory rooms throughout our regionalized programs to help address students' sensory integration needs. One other uh, regionalized program that we've worked on enhancing is our programs for students with uh, emotional and behavioral needs. Our Aspire program is built on three pillars of evidence-based practices for serving students with emotional and behavioral needs. These include multi-sensory therapeutic facilities, engaging academic instruction, and data-based individualized behavior intervention. This program has continued to be an area of focus and has led to reduced need for students that require out of state or segregated placements. We wanna thank you for your support of the District Behavior Support Assistance or BSA program. All BSAs have received registered behavior technician training, which is truly the gold standard. They've received a comprehensive 40-hour training with continued monthly coaching in the field. We support students at all campuses of any age. It's easy to request that BSA support through a quick Google form, and support is dispatched right away. We responded to nearly 100 requests last year from our school sites, and this support facilitates our students' acquisition of behavioral skills with dignity. 
in 21-22, we started a speech MTSS program for preschool age students. It's a program designed for a family based on the internationally recognized Hannon program. It supports both children and their parents and teaches them skills to support their child in practicing communication at home. We collect data to measure the effectiveness of the program and have had wonderful outcomes for these young ch students and their families. We will continue to study the ongoing effectiveness of this intervention program. This past year, we offered a multitude of training opportunities based on key areas of our departmental focus. With an emphasis on best practices, we trained our awesome staff in special ed assessments for English learners, patterns of strengths and weaknesses, and the renowned UCLA peers training for social skills. We also trained on the Autism Diagnostic Observation Scale, also known as the ADOS, and Orton-Gillingham Reading Strategies. We are proud to offer these robust resources in Orange Unified. Also last year, OUSD was honored to be tapped by the California Department of Education numerous times to present as an industry expert in special education. A couple of these are on your screen. We were one of three districts invited to present at CDE statewide Supporting Inclusive Practices Conference with thousands in attendance. We were also invited to present at the P3 preschool through third grade platform hosted again by CDE as an expert in inclusive education. We are proud to represent OUSD in these ways. On your screen, you can see the extensive and expansive tier three psychological supports provided to students and parents, including social work services, individual counseling, group counseling, um, parent counseling, uh, training in crisis prevention and intervention, uh, suicide and risk assessments, um, as well as direct counseling and reentry post psychiatric hospitalizations for our students. This work has led to increased attendance, grades, graduation rates, and a decrease in our district's suspension and expulsion. We would also like to highlight that through extensive partnership and outreach to local universities, we've been able to secure 22 university interns and externs to support our schools and school psychologists for the 21-22 school year. Partner universities include Chapman University, Azusa Pacific University, Alliant International, Brandman University, Cal State University Long Beach, Laverne, National University, and Biola University. One of our areas of innovation uh, was uh, this Special Education Compliance and Support Desk. We operate the only live IEP and compliance hotline in the county. Um, this resource supports our special education teachers, related service providers, and administrators. As you can see on the screen, um, it is highly and overwhelmingly uh, utilized support for our teams and has supported all the wonderful outcomes that you've heard about today in this presentation. So we're also honored um, to continue our coveted partnership with the California Department of Education Diagnostic Center um, as a partnership supported the implementation of best practices in our Aspire Academies that you heard about and provided access to industry um, experts in this area. The other partnership that we're really excited to report about, and it's really inspiring and uplifting for us as a department, is a partnership with the Santiago Community College as a host site for one of our adult transition program classes. This partnership took a lot of nurturing, a lot of time uh, for it to come to fruition, but I think it's, it's we're finally very pleased to report uh, the successful implementation of this partnership. So in essence, one of our classes will be housed at Santiago Community College for adult transition, and our students will have access to our transition, OUSD transition services. In addition to that, they will have access to Santiago's dual enrollment classes and the continuing education uh, programs at Santiago. So we're really excited about this. So I, on your screen is, is a representation of how we as a district continue to um, shine as one of the in inclusivity districts. Um, this is demonstrated by CDE, California Department of Education, awarding us this Supporting Inclusive Practices Grant 
not as a district needing improvement, but as a district that is an exemplar district in the state of California. Um, Cassie had previously mentioned that we were invited at a state platform because of, of our inclusivity and our best practices in inclusive education. Um, additionally, what you see on the screen is the inverted triangle reality. Um, the reality is the feds had promised us 40%, the state had promised 45%, and with 15% being picked up by the local um, school districts. That is inverted. Local um, you know, school districts are funding the majority, but at this point, I think it's important to note that um, Orange Unified topped the metric of effective fiscal management by special education when compared to all the single district SELPAs in Orange County. Um, additionally, as, as um, our deputy um, superintendent here will tell you, it's not easy to come across funding opportunities in, in our arena here, but we are always on the forefront looking for additional funding, and we're proud to report that last year, because of our heavy advocacy uh, with the state ledge committee and the alternative dispute resolution committees at the state level, we were awarded three grants for um, ADR, which is a dispute resolution. And we received an additional special education early intervention preschool grant. This is all through effective um, advocacy, just knocking on doors with legislators and not giving up. The next on your screen is just a snapshot of how we continue the, the state and local leadership and advocacy, uh, reaching out to legislators for continued support of funding. Um, I recall a presentation that I did back in 2018 when I started in the district, and we were, um, as OUSD, one of the lowest funded SELPAs in the state, uh, bringing in about $516 per ADA. We're very pleased to report that for this coming school year, through effective um, advocacy with the governor's office, with the legislators, with the Coalition for Adequate Funding for Special Education will be at $820 per ADA. The ask was $850, we kept pushing for it, but we'll take $820 um, as, as a good, uh, we've been equalized, which is a good thing. Um, and also, as far as our um, you know, continued presence to make sure we receive the funding, we are the co-chairs of the state um, ADR um, committee at the state level advocating for um, additional funding with legislators. We also chaired the Orange County um, SELPA group. We are um, the chief negotiators on the, uh, the rate panel for non-public schools, making sure that they don't continue to increase our rates. Um, and we provide leadership for parentally placed private school students. And um, we're representing OUSD statewide as special ed experts. For the next school year, um, I also wanted to share that OUSD will be once again at the forefront of special education leadership. We got nominated to be on the state um, steering committee, uh, providing direction to special education statewide. And we would also, we're also tapped to be the leaders with coaching and mentoring um, SELPA administrators statewide. So, you know, we want to end tonight by um, a visual representation of our why. Um, what drives our daily work is, is our students, and they are the goalpost. So we'll leave you with this this evening. Each day we start off with our morning routine. My children really love that because they're involved and they get to participate. The kids also just love when we, we sing our songs to listen and calm down. We use our Larry listening skills. They understand that if we don't listen, we won't learn and how important that is. Very quiet. You should really try it. Listening well. Listening well. 
at the beginning of the year, they could not listen and then answer a question because they were thinking of something else, but they've really seemed to achieve the understanding that all learning happens when we're paying attention. And so that has been super exciting in our class. I agree. This morning I was implementing an Orton-Gillingham training, so it really focuses on multi-sensory approach, which really helps students with dyslexia and students that are struggling readers. I had some visuals for them to identify digraphs, which was the squiggly on the line, and then we had a blending board for reading. I've seen huge gains in the last few months. Students are just hitting mastery checks quickly, so that means they're blending a lot faster, and they're just being a more fluent reader. Each day, the children have a different partner. That way they learn to talk to all of their friends in the room and they learn to take turns playing. The self-regulation is really a tough piece for them as they have to listen and they have to stop playing when the music stops and says, Shh. and it's working on fine motor, we're sharing, we're building language and vocabulary as they do these things. Currently here at Fairhaven, we have our OT Sensory Lab, which focuses on children's OT skills, which comes from fine motor skills, to flex seating, to movement, to rotating, to taking turns and waiting their turns. First, Miss Kim's turn, then your turn. Working with the ed specialists, we've realized that pushing into the class and helping them focus and just sit to learn would have been the best thing for them. So we do reflex integration exercises, which helps them focus and attend when they're at their desk for a longer period of time. They started off at the year not being able to do any of it, and now most of them are pretty independent with their exercises. Steven is a sixth grade student here at Canyon Hill School who is deaf and blind. Stephen has improved in three different areas, his receptive communication, his expressive communication, and his mobility. His expressive and receptive language is based on a communication system for individuals that are deaf and blind, which include objects, tangible symbols, texture symbols, and sign language. He's more able to understand and express himself. He has shown tremendous growth in his mobility. He started in a wheelchair and is now able to move about campus with minimal support and trailing with his hand along his path. Overall, Stephen has worked hard to participate in the school environment, as well as with adults and peers. COTOT has uh, really brought a lot more energy into my teaching here over the last five years. It's six, and what's the angle me measurement over there? Perfect, are those equal? Yes. Done deal. Usually we have about 25-30% uh, of the students have an IEP within the classroom. Over the next 48 minutes, uh, I, I'm, I'm really proud of the teamwork that my co-teacher and I have done because I really feel like it's, we, we have like a magic trick that goes on in here. These students who have an IEP by this age know they have special education, uh, but what COTOT does for about 48 minutes is make that disappear. Jessica, she and I were working on a little bit on cane skills, just a review of constant contact cane technique. We were also working on street crossings in a business district. Visually, she's crossing, but she's also auditorily you know, using the traffic sounds. She's using the pedestrian walk signal as she's graduating, moving into college, and going to be independent. These are skills that we're working on and preparing her for independent life in her future. This is Inclusion PE at Canyon High. Basically, the biggest, most important thing for us is to get these kids moving with their typical friends. The biggest benefits that our kids acquire here are independent skills, uh, teamwork skills, and also a lot of uh, sportsmanship skills. I run the Workability Grant here at Orange Unified School District. The grant is money that we receive from the state of California for students who are in the special education program. It provides them opportunities to have above and beyond vocational and pre-vocational skills. What we do at Adult Transition is basically what the word says, transition. They're transitioning out of high school into us, and we are just a small stop on the way to the next step, which is adulthood. We help them all year long with the soft skills as well as the hard skills that go along with, with doing an interview. The things that they work on is posture, eye contact, 
being prepared both physically, emotionally, and having the correct clothes. And then the day of the interview, they dress up in their Sunday best. We rode the OCTA to San Diego Canyon College where Heather had set up for the professional interview setting. And while they were interviewed, we videotaped them for evaluation purposes. What do you think it takes to be successful in this position? What I think it takes to be successful in this position is being a good worker, a good listener, and a helper. Thank you for interviewing me. The feedback that I get from the students that have already graduated is that this was a very valuable experience um, and they were able to fall back on their past experience and both the positives and the negatives that went with it. They knew how to deal with the anxiety, but they were confident that they could succeed. I want school to be a happy place to be, a place where they feel secure and loved and that they can be successful. I love teaching um, students with disabilities because if you get to know these students, they bring so much joy to your life. Seeing their eyes light up when you teach them something new or when they realize a skill that they didn't think they could do that they actually have is the best part of my job. It's what keeps me coming back every day and just wanting more. This job has many different facets, but all of them come down to one thing, and it's the success and independence of the students. Wow. We just want to acknowledge our communications department and one of our team members, Sarah Dalton, who facilitated um, the recording. So thank you, and we're happy to take any questions that you may have. Okay. Wow, I'm just overwhelmed watching the video. Yes. Thank you, thank you so much for doing so much. Um, for advocating for our special education students, for creating such successful programs, and really taking um, our special education to new levels. And so I really appreciate all uh, your department and everybody else who supports, you know, um, I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Um, our district is blessed to have so many um, great teachers and support staff for our us, our, our students. So thank you. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any comments or questions? Okay, Trustee Erickson. Um, thank you. Um, I will echo what President Yamasaki has said, um, you really are remarkable. All Everybody that's involved in special education is just has the biggest heart and the data that you've given us is proof of how effective um, we are, our teachers on the ground, our assistants. Um, you've created an incredible number of programs. We're trying to fund as much as we can in terms of giving additional, you know, funds for BSAs and things like that. Um, and I'm really happy to hear that you have the 20, you said 22 new interns? Yes. Um, I think that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, but there's always exactly as, uh, I think it was Ms. Sutherland um, said, there's, there's turnover. And I know that speaks to just how difficult the job is, the work is. Um, how do we, how do we help that? I mean, how do we recruit better? Or I know this is a, is a problem throughout the nation and it's not an OUSD problem. Um, I do like the idea, like I said, if you have 22 interns, I'm assuming you're sort of trying to create a pool of people that will then come to OUSD permanently. Um, you know, how else do we, how do we fix the problem? Sure. I, Thank you for that question. It is a great question, and I, I do want to uh, put things in perspective. It is the Hunger Games out there. I'm just going to say it. Um, it's a challenge um, throughout the nation, and especially in the world of special education. The, the, uh, the mention of turnover is not unique to our district. It is something that is across the board. Um, and as, as someone who's attempting to hire, I have open coordinator positions. As someone who's attempting to hire, we're, we're, we're rushing because, you know, here Tustin picks us up or, or someone else picks up. 
people are going vacant with leadership positions, with teaching positions. Um, we have, um, we're looking to partner with Chapman, the, the internship, the residency program. So we're attempting different avenues which are creative, um, out of the box and um, supporting through extended supports that we have. I do believe having worked in another district and having colleagues from, uh, we meet as a, as a leadership group at the SELPA level, what we offer as training, as support, um, and opportunities within Orange Unified are exemplary. And I will stand by it that what we offer our staff is exceptional support. We have the compliance desk, we have instructional specialists that go out and support um, new teachers. We've got supports, how to do um, baselines, how to do goals. The compliance desk is monitored 24 seven. And it's not by one person, it's we take, all take turns in, in, in sending out information. That's a commitment from leadership. Um, just just in support of the work that is done at the site level. We're nothing um, if we don't have the support of our teams at the site level. And there is an acknowledgement of, of that through the extensive supports. To thank you for your commitment to for the BSAs. That helps. That helps our teachers, that helps our staff, that helps our students. With dignity, like Cassie said, that's our goal is to teach and address the behavioral challenges that, that are ensuing after this pandemic because kids haven't been in school. So it is teaching the skills to the staff, how to intervene, how to step, so the BSA step back, teach, and then it's a, it's a coaching model. We obviously cannot sustain um, having BSAs in every classroom. It's, it's a coaching model. Um, so I think there's extensive commitment. Um, there's been additional um, psychologists that have been added, additional counselors, additional instructional assistants. And if we are not, if our instructional assistant positions are not filled, we're reaching out to non-public agencies and filling those in. If our teaching positions are not filled, we've got subs in there. And we're supporting the case management through our instructional specialists. There's a commitment of complete support, um, but the challenges are real in the world of education. I, I have no doubt the commitment's there, no doubt in my mind at all. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's finding qualified people that, that will stick with it too, right. because it's a difficult job. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think it, it stems from, and, and I do believe in it, that we have made tremendous progress. I, Going back to our LRE, we were not meeting any of the targets for 10 years in a row to now meeting all three. Tremendous progress, tremendous commitment um, to, to get to snag those, those grants. I'll share with you last, year, last school year, we ended with 190 alternative dispute resolution meetings that we had with families. We don't want them to go and spend the money with, with an attorney. We want to resolve in-house. And we take that all in and, and resolve at, at the early level so that trust is maintained and we're able to work with families that we have. Some of our families are with us till you know, the kids are 22. So it's important that we continue. We keep our goalpost as our students, you know, our outcomes. Are, are, are there, yeah. and so uh, we continue with the commitment of support um, in, in the real world that we're facing of challenges. Yes. Absolutely. Trustee Page? Yes, thank you. And it all comes from leadership because every time we were turning a page in your presentation, the changes started when your team came on. So. We have great appreciation for you and your leadership and how you've been able to completely transform um, special ed in our district. Thank you. I and it. it was a really good video. Like we were probably almost all crying because yes. we've seen the transformation in all the students, especially um, some of the stories that we've heard visiting some of the graduations or some of the sites, you know, having students come in 
um, in a wheelchair and not really being able to maneuver or communicate even to then see them completely walking and being able to use their sensory skills to maneuver through. And then also to see a lot of the students that were in the video now graduate and move on completely on their own. And it's just heartwarming to see yes. the transformation that they've gone through probably when they started you know, before three all the way until 22. Also to point out though that special ed is way more than that as well. You know, even though you serve students that have moderate or severe disabilities, that there are a lot of students that we're serving that have mild disabilities that are completely integrated in our typical classrooms or in our gen ed. So um, I just wanted to also say that just in case that needed to be clarified for our community who um, is watching tonight, but also that just we're grateful for your leadership and the commitment that everyone, even our teachers and our IAs and everyone that is participating in this, supporting our students. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just wanted to um, also thank you for a amazing presentation and amazing video. Um, it definitely shows that it's an exemplary program and that you're committed to excellence. Um, I wanted, I was, you know, jotting down highlights and you, you kind of run out of space because there's so much. Um, specifically for me, it was looking at the sensory rooms. I, I love to see stuff like that. The, and the adult transition classroom and opportunities, the BSA training. Um, your work is important and inspiring. Um, some of the quotes from the video, I like the teacher who said that when, when they're in his classroom, their disabilities disappear. And as an educator, that's my goal too. Um, school should always be a happy place, totally believe in that. <laughs> And when I've had students with special needs, those are always some of my favorite years, and I grow so much as an individual. Um, and I will always remember those, those students. So thank you so, so much for all your work. Thank you for that comment. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I just add one more thing? Um, I just wanted to say, you know, you can show us all the numbers and statistics, and they're wonderful, but the proof is when we make school visits and we talk to parents, we see the students, and that's where we see the differences. I mean, I think some of us visit the Canyon Hills graduation and we see the parents just glowing and that is one graduation that I will try to make to always attend because it's that special, even if there's just one graduate. Um, just hearing from the parents talking about the program. I, I remember talking to a parent who came all the way from Long Beach for the program, and they just said it was the best. So thank you so much. Thank you all for your support. Yeah. We couldn't do this without all of your support, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Singh, for your efforts and your leadership team. I know that in Orange County, with the superintendents that I have access to and work with on a you know, weekly basis, they're always, I have to keep them away because they know how good she is. And um, all your whole team, yes. you know, is just incredible and just recognized for the incredible work and the word of mouth from your families that appreciate you and your team so much for helping their children be successful because that's what it's really about. Thank so, you. Thank you, Dr. Granite, Pat. Patsy, right? Patsy and Dr. Singh for your presentation. Okay. Um, lost my focus here. We'll go on to item nine, consent items. Let me read. Hey, consent items are acted upon by one motion. However, any such item can be considered separately at the board member's request and will be acted upon following approval of the consent item. Uh, would anyone like to um, pull an item or move to approve? I'll move to approve. All right. Second. Thank you. Trustee Erickson and Trustee Page seconded. Um, any discussion? 
Yes. All right. Um, all those in favor? Sorry. Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay. Consent items are approved. Motion is adopted. All right. We'll go to item 17, public comments. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. Thank you. Uh, item 18, board staff conference and comments. Do we have any comments? Just real quick, I just want to follow up with the superintendent to see, and I don't know if you had sent it out yet, on the parent volunteers uh, that we discussed the other day as far as testing concerns and then also for any staff uh, testing as well. Yes, and my newsletter went out, I believe, yesterday afternoon with all that information. Okay. And the principals are also sending out their own communication, so that was all included. Okay, so we're equal across the board, though, because remember I, the discussion we had is kind of each principal took on their own island, so. Oh, yeah, no, all that's been clarified, educational services. We had a meeting this week. Okay. We reviewed the communication, so everything is very clear. Um, the principals received, I believe it was on Monday or Tuesday, a memo that clarified everything that was also the same thing that went out in my newsletter. So it's the same message. Okay. Because, you know, understanding now things have now changed and how, you know, even the CDC says changes their tune. So kind of unique. But okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the newsletter goes out district wide, correct? Yes. No. Yes, and, and I believe I sent it to the board this time because okay. there was a board member question about it. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Any other comments? All right, meeting is adjourned at uh, 9.03 p.m. Thank you.